Hey guys, it's Erica here from Big Cat Creative and today I'm going to show you how to create these little animated gift stickers like this in Canva and Photoshop. So I'm going to bet that most of you have used gift stickers in your Instagram stories before, but have you ever wondered how to create your own? The good news is that these seem a lot more complicated to create than they actually are. There are a few ways you can create these short animations, but two of the most popular and easiest are in Canva and Photoshop. So let's dive in. Okay, so log into your Canva account and we're going to click create a design. For my design, I'm going to do a custom size and I want it to be wider because I'm just going to do our business name and text. But depending on what you want to do, you'll want to create your own custom size for your GIF. And it might take a little bit of adjusting to get the perfect size, but just start somewhere and you can always create new documents until you're happy with the size. So that is a little bit of a tricky thing in Canva because you can't adjust the size once you've created the document, which is a little bit annoying, but it just takes a little bit of trial and error depending on what you're designing. So I'm going to go with 1000 by 250 pixels high. So it's going to give me sort of short and wide document. And this should work well for what I'm creating. So with Canva, Basically each frame or page that you have is going to be a frame for the animation. So you kind of think of it like a flip book. Each frame creates the movement we'll see in the final animation. So with that, the first frame is going to be the starting point of the GIF and basically just design whatever you want to here. So I'm just going to do some simple text using text and a font, but if you are going to use any elements or assets, included in Canva. Just be sure to check the usage rights. All free media on Canva can be used for free and commercial and non-commercial use. So I believe you can basically use these unlimited, but if you are planning to sell them or upload them to Instagram, which is kind of like the final point in this process, if that's what you want to do, I would just double check that it's okay to use the element that you're using. So you can either check the source or you can actually contact Canva and ask them directly, I'm sure they'll be able to help. But I'm just using text today, so there's not gonna be any issues there. Okay, so I've just added some text in a color, and then I also added an outline version by using the effects and the hollow feature here. So I just got some text with an outline. Super basic, but this is just for demonstration. Feel free to get however creative you want to on this. So now essentially it's just a case of duplicating this and making small changes to the original and that's going to create some animation. So I'm going to click a duplicate page which is going to duplicate and then I'm going to take this outline and we're going to copy it, duplicate it and then I'm just going to move it down and to the back so it sort of gives a bit of a 3D effect. Then I'm just going to do that a few times just to create a little bit more of the animation. So I'm going to take that one at the back, I'm going to copy it, I'm going to send it to the back and I'm going to use the arrow key to create some more animation. Okay, that's enough for the example. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this again and I'm going to remove that third one so it goes back to just having the two just like that, and then because it repeats over and over from wherever it ends, it's going to go back to the first frame. So we've got none, one, two, one, and then it will go back to none. So it's going to sort of repeat itself over and over. Super simple. I'm not even sure how good it's going to look, but it's for demonstration. Now for the animation, this is a little bit annoying with Canva because it doesn't immediately show you the animation options all of the time. Mine seems to be showing the frame timing, which is the main thing we want to look at, but it's not showing me an example where I can click play and actually preview what it's going to look like. Now, if you add any sort of animation effect with the animate panel, you can hover over them to see what these look like. So these are actually really cool. You could create GIFs just with these too if you wanted to. If you click on one of these and use it, you'll see a little play button comes up here and then you can actually watch your whole animation. This is going to look crazy at the moment because I haven't set anything up, but this is the sort of preview it gives you. And this is really handy, but unfortunately, if you don't want to use any of these animations and if you just want to use whatever you've created in your frames, 
then the preview disappears. So it's a little bit of trial and error here, unless you, of course, use the animations. Then you get the correct preview. If you don't, you just have to sort of guess how long you want your frames to be. So in my case, right now, my frames are going for five seconds each, which is way too long for a GIF. I would probably start with trying 0 0.5 seconds. So just type it in and click enter, and you can also click apply to all pages and then click enter. And that should apply the time to all pages. So if you click on the actual page, you'll see that these are all at 0 0.5. So unfortunately we can't preview this, which is really annoying. One thing I do sometimes in Canva, if I do want to preview it and just get an idea of how long it's going to be, I just throw another frame at the end and I will animate something on here. And that's going to, not look quite right because it's not going to show our whole animation but at least we can watch the first part of the animation and just preview it we get an idea of how fast that gif is going so i think that's pretty cool i'm happy with that speed so i'm going to delete this last frame because it was just a duplicate and i'm going to download it as a gif now so i'm happy with that obviously very simple and if you do something more complex it will take a little bit more time but that is the whole process of creating a gif in canva so just using the frames, just like a flip book and making sure to edit the timing is that's going to be a huge part of how the GIF animates. So the final thing is that you'll want to download it. One annoying thing about Canva is that it doesn't let you download transparent GIFs. So when I download this GIF, the background is going to be just plain white. It's not going to be transparent. So you'd either want to put this on somewhere that has a white background anyway, or if you want to use it on Instagram, you might want to give it a colored background to make it more of a square banner. And because of this, you might want to adjust the size of your artboard as well. If I was going to do this properly, I'd maybe make it a little smaller so there was less white because right now there's quite a lot of white space. So if you do really want it to be transparent, the other thing you can do is find an online tool that will remove the background for you. So there is this one here. There might be better ones. I just Googled this and found it. And it's called onlinegiftools.com slash create dash transparent dash gif. And I just uploaded my file with the white background, as you can see here. And it immediately just took the background out and you can re-download it. So it does work. It's not super high quality. Uh, you might be able to play around with the settings to get something better or use a different online tool. I'm sure there's lots of them. So that is an option too. But if you're happy with the background and just want to download it from Canva as is, just click share, download, and then there will be a GIF option and it will compile all of the different frames into one animation. Okay, so when you open it up, I'm not sure if this is the case for Windows, but definitely on Mac, in preview, it will open up as, as many different images as you downloaded, but it is actually an animation. And if I look at it in the preview in my finder, it will animate it. So it shows up in a variety of ways, but this is really its true form here. And that's how you create a GIF in Canva, super quick and simple. Now let's check out how to do the same thing in Photoshop. Okay, so now for Photoshop. Uh, there's two ways that you can start your GIF in Photoshop, and it depends whether you already have the graphics designed for the GIF, or if you want to design them directly in Photoshop. So obviously if you're more comfortable with Photoshop, you probably want to design them in Photoshop. In that case, you just start a new file, and you would do a similar process as what we did in Canva, but instead of using the different pages as frames, we'll use different layers. So I'll show you how to do that in a second. If you already have the files that you want to upload for your GIF and all you're doing is loading them into Photoshop to make them into an animation, you can load them in as their own layers too. So I'm going to just start a new file and I'm just going to do the same thing as I did in Canva. I'm going to go 1000 by 250 pixels and you can do the same thing here like you did in Canva. You could do some text, you can create whatever you want in Photoshop. So I actually ended up downloading the graphics that I had already designed in Canva just to save some time because I've already done them. But you know, if you have experience with Photoshop, feel free to design your own frames in Photoshop and just create each animation on a different layer. So you'll just want to continue to add layers and create those slight differences on new layers. And you'll probably want to use the little eye icons to hide and show different layers. And this is going to show all of the differences in your layers 
But if you do have the graphics already and you just want to load them in, what you can do is go file, scripts, load files into stack. I'm just going to look for those graphics. And I'm going to click open on all of them. Click OK. And then it might take a minute, but it's going to load all of the different graphics in as different layers. So this is just basically brings them in as different layers so you don't have to add them in one by one. So I have all four of my layers and you can actually see all of them at once. So it is a little messy. If you want to, you can just click on the eye tool and you can hide each separate layer so you can see what the next one is going to look like. So those are the four different images I have. So we have our graphics. We're done with the actual designing. All we need to do now is animate it. So in Photoshop, you'll want to go to window and click on timeline. If it has a tick by it, it's probably already open. So mine's here down the bottom. Click create frame animation. So then we're going to select all of our layers. So you can either do that by holding down shift and actually selecting all of your layers, or you can click up here, select all layers, and that's gonna make sure everything's selected. Okay, then we're gonna click on this little menu icon here. Make sure create new layer for each new frame is ticked. Then click on it again, and we're going to make frames from layers. So that's going to essentially make animation frames from each of your layers. Now your timeline window should have all of your layers in it. So same again, we need to adjust the time frame on each of these frames. So right now you can see that it's set to zero seconds and I'm going to go ahead and set it to 0.5 again because that's what I used in Canva, but you can play around and adjust these to whatever you like. You can do them individually just like you could in Canva so you can change them each or you can select them all. I just clicked and holding down shift, clicked the first one and then clicked the last one and that's gonna select them all. Then change the time and it will change it on all of them. Now with GIFs, they should technically automatically loop forever. If you export as a GIF, it will just keep continually playing on most mediums as that's just what GIFs do. But just to be safe, change it to forever instead of once or three times. And that's just gonna mean it's just gonna loop and loop and loop, which is what you want a GIF to do. And at any point you can actually preview how it looks, which will be helpful when you're setting the times by clicking this little play button. And it's just gonna show you how it looks. So it's got a nice easy preview, which is a little easier to use than Canva, I think. So once you're happy with how your GIF looks, I'm happy with that, we're going to export it as an actual GIF. So click on file, export, save for web legacy, and then up here where it says preset, we're going to choose one of the GIFs. So there's a lot of different presets in here. You might not have all of these. You might just have a regular GIF option. In that case, just choose that. It doesn't really matter what one you choose because the different presets are essentially just sets of settings and you can still play around with the settings. So the settings are important because it's going to tell you how big your GIF is getting, as in how heavy the file is. So if you come and look down the bottom corner here, you can see that right now it's at 63 kilobytes, which is tiny and that's great. The smaller, the better, to be honest, as long as the quality is still looking good. So if you have more colors or pictures or essentially a higher detailed GIF, the size of your GIF is going to increase quite a lot. So mine is very simple. There's only two colors, so it's keeping it really nice and small. And small is better just because then you can use it in web applications without having to compress it and it will look clearer. As soon as you start adding images and stuff, it will need to be compressed and it will start to look quite pixelated. Um, so I do recommend keeping your graphics pretty simple, but either way, just have a play around with the presets. Doesn't really matter what one you choose. In my case, it really doesn't matter because it's not really making any sort of difference because it is such a simple GIF. As long as it looks good and you're keeping this basically as small as possible, this number down here, while it still looks good and you're happy with how it looks. So it's sort of a happy medium between trying to keep it nice and small but while also looking good and not pixelated. So that's it, just click save. 
And now you have a GIF that looks very similar to the one in Canva. The main difference between creating these in Canva or Photoshop is that it is a lot easier to create a transparent background in Photoshop. You can download it with a transparent background as you can see mine has. Hopefully they create that feature in Canva soon. I don't actually know why they don't have that as an option yet, but hopefully they introduce that. And that's it for GIFs in Canva and Photoshop. If you did want to go on to trying to add these to your Instagram stories as stickers, I have linked below a article put together by a later, which walks you through the process of how to upload it to Giphy and then add it to Instagram. It's a little bit of a process, but that's what you got to do if you want it on Instagram. So check that post out if you want to do that. Otherwise, feel free to use all these GIFs on your website or your social media or basically anywhere you can upload an image, you should be able to upload a GIF to make it a little bit more exciting. So hopefully this tutorial was easy enough to follow. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and if you wanna share what you created, that would be awesome too. So I'll see you in the next one.